China has unveiled the LY-1 naval laser, a 180 to 250 kilowatt directed energy system that could redefine ship protection technology. This video reveals how it works, what its creators claim, and why it's capturing global attention. We'll compare it to U.S. programs like Helios, explore the engineering hurdles of operating such power at sea, and examine what this innovation could mean for the future of maritime defense and next-generation naval systems. China's LY-1, Neyuan-1, laser made headlines when it appeared during the September 3, 2025, parade in Beijing. It was introduced as a next-generation directed energy turret capable of outputting 180 to 250 kilowatts, a power range far higher than many known naval systems. The Ordnance Industry Science and Technology Journal described it as the final defensive layer of a ship's protection system, built to counter fast-moving drones and incoming guided threats in their terminal phase, forming part of a broader effort to modernize energy-based defenses across multiple platforms. The system's design reveals a circular main aperture, essentially the eye of the weapon, flanked by smaller sensor windows believed to host electro-optical and infrared cameras. A rectangular side module appears to contain components for fire control and thermal management, critical for aiming precision and cooling. Observers also spotted a variant mounted on a wheeled vehicle, indicating potential for land-based defense roles. Reports further link a similar turret to a Type 071 amphibious transport dock, signaling that naval integration may already be underway and reflecting China's continued drive toward multi-domain flexibility. The standout specification is LY-1's beam director aperture, reportedly larger than those used by U.S. systems. A wider aperture can improve beam focus and energy density, increasing the chance of disabling targets at longer distances. The turret's spacious housing also hints at room for future power module upgrades, aligning with China's ambition for scalable directed energy innovation. However, the claim stops short of verifiable testing details. The official data lacks any public sea trial results, information about beam quality, or specifics on how long the system can sustain firing at full power. Operating a high-energy laser at sea isn't just about electricity. It's about managing heat, turbulence, vibration, and humidity that can scatter or distort the beam. Without validated demonstrations in maritime conditions, LY-1 remains an impressive claim on paper rather than a proven operational reality. To grasp why LY-1's claims are so significant, we have to compare them to existing U.S. naval laser programs. The Helios system, Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, I. Its publicly stated power level is around 60 kilowatts, with modular upgrades planned for the future. Helios successfully engaged small aerial targets, proving that high-energy lasers could work in real maritime conditions and operate safely alongside advanced radar and missile systems without disrupting onboard electronics. The U.S. Navy also tested the Laser Weapon System Demonstrator, LWSD, at roughly 150 kilowatts. Another system, Odin, serves as a non-destructive dazzler that blinds or confuses sensors on approaching drones. Together, these programs showcase the U.S. approach, gradual improvement through transparent testing, careful certification, an iterative deployment, even if raw power growth is slower than China's announced figures. Against this backdrop, China's LY-1 is described as having three main advantages. First, the higher power class, between 180 and 250 kilowatts, places it potentially above all current operational Western ship lasers. Second, its larger optical aperture could improve beam stability and focus at longer distances. Third, its modular internal volume may allow technicians to add more laser modules over time, pushing performance higher and extending its lifespan through incremental upgrades rather than complete replacements. But the comparison reveals an important contrast in philosophy. U.S. systems emphasize documented reliability, while LY-1 emphasizes announced capability. American programs publish power figures, test videos, and engagement data. China's reveal was mostly architectural and ceremonial. The U.S. approach is slower but verifiable. The Chinese approach is ambitious but opaque, relying on strategic perception to demonstrate progress rather than on public test data. 
That difference matters. Transparency breeds confidence in real-world use. Helios has already proven its ability to track and disable small drones under live conditions, validating both performance and safety protocols. Meanwhile, no public data yet confirms LY1's operational endurance, target range, or environmental resilience, key factors that determine whether a laser can function effectively for extended missions at sea. Turning LY-1 from a showpiece into a dependable defensive tool involves immense engineering hurdles. The first challenge is power generation and thermal management. A laser outputting hundreds of kilowatts requires a stable energy source and robust cooling to prevent overheating. Even advanced warships must balance between powering propulsion, sensors, and new directed energy weapons. If the cooling system can't handle prolonged firing, the weapon must pause limiting its defensive usefulness. The second challenge is beam control and atmospheric distortion. Laser light interacts with air, moisture, and sea spray, which can scatter or absorb energy, reducing range and precision. To maintain accuracy, LY-1 would need adaptive optics, systems that adjust mirrors in milliseconds to correct distortions. Achieving that level of stability on a rolling ship deck, surrounded by humid sea air, is exceptionally difficult. A third technical issue is optical durability. Maritime environments are harsh. Salt corrosion and vibration can misalign mirrors and degrade optics. Each component must withstand constant motion, temperature shifts, and the occasional high wind or rain event. Maintaining perfect beam alignment under these stresses requires constant recalibration and maintenance. Even if the hardware challenges are solved, operational success depends on integration and doctrine. The LY-1 must work seamlessly with ship radars, infrared trackers, and onboard computing systems that handle target identification and firing sequences. That demands complex sensor fusion and skilled operators trained in both energy management and precision targeting. On the strategic side, the laser's promise lies in efficiency. Each shot costs little more than the electricity consumed, potentially a few dollars compared to the hundreds of thousands spent on missile interceptors. For drone defense and close-range protection, this could dramatically lower operating costs. If the LY-1 can reliably engage small, fast targets, it could conserve missile cells for higher-value threats. However, these benefits only materialize if LY-1 performs consistently in variable weather and during long deployments. For now, the technology remains unproven at sea. The unveiling signals ambition a statement that China intends to lead in directed energy innovation. But the real milestone will come when sustained. Verified trials confirm that this laser can endure the harsh realities of maritime operations. In essence, LY-1 symbolizes both potential and uncertainty. It could reshape how ships protect themselves in the years ahead, or remind us just how difficult it is to bend light into a practical shield on the open ocean. The unveiling of China's LY-1 naval laser offers a glimpse into the next chapter of directed energy technology. Its claimed 180 to 250 kilowatts output and scalable architecture suggest a serious effort to modernize ship defense systems. Yet until extensive at-sea testing confirms durability and precision, it remains an ambitious prototype rather than an operational game-changer. Still, its existence alone shifts expectations for what future navies might deploy. The age of energy-based defense isn't just coming. It may already be beginning with LY-1 leading the charge. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.